Hello, I'm State Senator Lou Gentile from the 30th Senate District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Thanks for joining us for Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Mike Rao. Today we are pleased to have as our guest State Senator Lou Gentile from Steubenville. He's here to give us a legislative update. Senator, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. It's great to be here. Well, when it comes to our legislative update, the big issue, jobs, and that's something you've really been focusing a lot on. Absolutely. Um, it's, I think, the top priority uh, for me as a legislator. Uh, it's the issue that I hear most about uh, while traveling my district. And uh, so far, um, I've been working on a piece of legislation uh, that would actually uh, help our ailing manufacturers. Uh, currently, uh, in my district, uh, manufacturing has and always has been, and I think will continue to be, uh, an industry um, that we've relied on. Uh, we've had some challenges uh, here in the past and continue to have some struggles. And so uh, I took it upon myself uh, to introduce uh, a manufacturing uh, bill, a bill that would give or provide uh, a short-term tax incentive to uh, idled manufacturers here in the state of Ohio. Uh, that if they decide to get back into the market and start up again, uh, they'll have an opportunity uh, to have some uh, capital in the short term uh, so they can get back on their feet and begin to employ uh, our hardworking Ohioans. What's been the feedback so far on your, on your bill? It's been pretty positive. Uh, I had the opportunity to have a hearing uh, in the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, had some good questions. Uh, we also have uh, manufacturers that are also looking to expand or grow. Mm -hmm. So not only will idled manufacturers be able to take uh, advantage of this tax credit or this uh, tax incentive, uh, but those manufacturers looking to grow uh, and looking for some relief uh, to hire more workers. And that's what this is all about. It's really aimed at trying to support uh, the manufacturers in the state who want to come back to the market, uh, who want to uh, employ Ohioans, who want to continue to grow. Uh, and so I think we've pulled together a good piece of legislation. Uh, the tax uh, incentive that we've built in, uh, you know, will, will eventually sunset, um, it, you know, so that we understand and are sensitive to uh, the revenue challenges we've had here in the state. But uh, in the short term, really aimed at helping uh, those manufacturers who have either been idled or are looking to grow and expand in the state of Ohio. How important is manufacturing to your district? It's very important. Um, we have uh, a number of opportunities, uh, I think, in manufacturing. Uh, we've traditionally been a steel area uh, that's relied heavily on steel. Uh, I, I'd like to see steel uh, make a comeback. I think, uh, as Governor Kasich has even stated, uh, that we're starting to see that around Ohio. Uh, resurgence in manufacturing, but also uh, with the booming uh, oil and gas industry, uh, I think that uh, manufacturing will play a critical uh, place in, in trying to um, support uh, this, this uh, growing oil and gas industry. And so I think we need to be in a position to do that. Uh, and there's also other manufacturing going on in my district, uh, you know, that sometimes doesn't get the attention that I think it should on the lighter manufacturing side. And we want to include uh, those employers uh, as well. You mentioned energy and oil and gas drilling, which obviously is a huge issue in the whole eastern part sure. of Ohio, and especially in your district. Uh, right now, the, the General Assembly is, is debating some different legislation issues regarding energy, you know, how can we promote the development, how can we properly regulate it. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? It's a very robust debate uh, that we're having, as we should. Um, I think it's very important uh, that we arrive at an energy policy that's balanced, uh, a policy um, that will uh, help Ohioans uh, be employed uh, and gain employment uh, and sustainable job growth, uh, but also one that protects uh, our environment and make sure that uh, our infrastructure is properly cared for. Uh, two issues that I'm working heavily on uh, as this energy debate continues uh, are around both jobs and protecting our local infrastructure. Uh, I've heard a lot from my constituents uh, about the importance of making sure that uh, Ohioans have an opportunity to participate in this oil and gas uh, industry and in an oil and gas play. And, uh, you know, what we want to make sure we're doing uh, is that we're training workers 
there's a adequate workforce development programs uh, that our local qualified, skilled uh, trades and construction workers uh, have an opportunity to participate in some of the uh, pro processing of the natural gas. Uh, the Mark West Corporation uh, has announced major investments in my district in both Harrison and Monroe counties. Uh, and I think we have uh, some of the most skilled, qualified workers uh, who are in a great position uh, to help construct these uh, massive processing facilities that are coming online as a result of this development. So uh, I'm working on some language uh, as we, as we uh, go through this process um, that will produce a report here in Ohio so that we know uh, what Ohioans are being employed, how many Ohioans are being employed, what are the impacts, mm -hmm. uh, the economic impacts uh, of this industry, and how many contractors are actually uh, getting the chance or the opportunity to participate. That's an important aspect of that, uh, as well as trying to make sure that we have uh, adequate agreements in place between the industry and local governments to protect uh, our very critical infrastructure, our roads, our bridges. And so those are two uh, prominent issues, I think, that are taking uh, you know, center stage in this debate. And it's also something that I've heard from my constituents. Another issue that I know that I've heard you talk about is the, the idea of making sure that Eastern Ohio gets to share in the in the wealth that, that is generated by this oil and gas boom that doesn't go to other parts of the country that really make sure that it stays uh, some of the impact stays right in Ohio. One of the challenges we've had in eastern and southeastern Ohio uh, for many decades now is sort of a boom and bust. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with coal, with steel, um, we've had upticks in, in economic growth. Um, but the sustainability has not always been there. And uh, we've seen a sudden increase in wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, Ohioans who are selling their mineral rights uh, are gaining uh, vast amounts of wealth, and we're happy about that. What we want to do and what I'm working on currently uh, is to try to establish ways that the state of Ohio uh, will reward or incentivize uh, those landowners who are then going to take that wealth that they've generated from their land and reinvest it in small, uh, small businesses and local companies to help grow sustainable jobs uh, and a sustainable economy for southeastern Ohio. Uh, and so we think the state should be a partner in this. Uh, we're working uh, closely to develop uh, you know, legislation on this matter uh, that will uh, give a reward those property owners who really want to make that investment in the local area uh, to help create a small business. Uh, or to invest it in some other economic venture. Uh, and so we need to take advantage of this opportunity while we have it. Uh, we need to try to keep this wealth in Eastern Ohio, not just for a decade, but for many years to come. Another issue that's being talked about right now in the General Assembly, it's, it's really, I guess, more part of a long, ongoing conversation, and that's about education. Yes. And about uh, what changes we need to make to make sure that the districts in all parts of the state have the resources they need, and this is an especially important issue in your district. It is. Um, I've spent a lot of time uh, throughout my district going to schools, uh, meeting with uh, teachers, meeting with the administration, talking to students, which I really enjoy, and I've found that to be uh, very informative, uh, but it's also really given me an understanding of what's going on in our public school systems. And, uh, you know, I've become very concerned that, that Ohio still continues to rely upon uh, you know, property taxes to fund our schools. And uh, as you know, in a lot of parts of my district, the economy has struggled for some time. Uh, the aging population, uh, this reliance on property taxes uh, has really put us at a disadvantage, quite frankly. And uh, I really think the state of Ohio, both parties, need to come together and try to agree on comprehensive education reform uh, that addresses this funding issue. Uh, we've dealt sort of around the edges on a number of policy matters uh, relating to education. Uh, I understand that uh, we continue to need to work on these matters, but I think the looming issue at hand here is still trying to find an equitable way uh, to fund our schools. Uh, and I think it's important. It's important to jobs. We won't grow our economy uh, or improve our economy or build a sustainable economy unless we have an educated workforce. And I think it starts uh, with offering uh, sound public education and making sure we have the resources uh, to fund our schools. And I imagine there are probably a lot of districts, school districts in your Senate district that will have issues on the ballot this fall because of this lingering issue. And they do, and they continue to go back to the voters, um, and it's very challenging in a lot of ways uh, for uh, the voters uh, who in many cases are on fixed incomes, uh, who really uh, have been on unstable ground when it comes to uh, their ability to, to keep jobs or to find new jobs. And so 
um, it's very challenging to try to continue to pass levies when people aren't in a position uh, to necessarily support those levies. And at the end of the day, this is about our young people and trying to find a way to make sure they're getting the best possible education so we can compete in this economy. All right. Thank you, Senator Gentile, for coming by to talk to us, and we'll have to do this again in a few months. I look forward to it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Well, you can keep up with the latest news on Senator Gentile and other members of the Ohio Senate Democratic Caucus on Facebook and at ohiosenatedems.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching Ohio in Focus.